Hi, this is Deb Grainer with USA Trans Movement. It's Labor Day weekend here in the Big Apple, and we are getting ready for Electric Zoo. Standing next to me is the one and only Mr. Ferry Corsten. Ferry, how are you? Good. How Welcome are you? to New York. Thank you very much. You've been I'm here uh, many times before. Yeah, yeah. Tell me what you like best about coming to New York. Uh, the sort of like the madhouse it is. Yeah. You know? I love it. Do I you like the pizza? The, yeah, also, <laughs> of course. Yeah. No, but all the you know. The, 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 the melting pot of everything, yep. food, people, uh, you know, just I, I love it. I love the, the, the hustle and bustle. Now you're set to go on at 6 o'clock, Electric Zoo. Yeah. Um, what goes into preparing for such an event like this? Because I know that you kind of get a shorter time slot, maybe an hour, an hour and a half. Is it more difficult for you to get ready for that? Or? Usually an hour and a half, you know, it's, it's, it's like you said, it's shorter. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I, I would love to, to play like the three hour sets where I can just go left and right. But an hour and a half is more like, okay, what do I have that creates as much energy as possible? Uh, without playing the hits, hits. You right, know? right. So, um, so of course, there's a, there's a few, it's like more familiar tracks in there. But then I try to play a special edit of it. You right. know, so it's sometimes it, there's a, there's a lot of preparation going into editing stuff mm -hmm. to just make it sound a little different. You know, so when you're, when you're in the in the crowd, you hear the track come in, but it, it's not doing what you expect it to do. It's a little different. So that's always cool. Uh, new tracks, uh, yeah, really. And, I know and, you and said on your radio show this week that you're excited to play a track that for the first time in New York. Talk a little bit about that. Uh, a remix, well, I believe. I, yeah, you know, uh, what Is am it I? A surprise? Am I ruining the surprise? It's, no, it's not a surprise, really. <laughs> I, I played it on, of course, this countdown, and uh, you know, one of my favorite bands is Snow Patrol. Uh, I met them in, when they were in Rotterdam, in my city, and um, yeah, we were talking about remixing, and you know, from that came like, hey. Let's do a, can I do a remix of right. New York? Because I love that track, it's a ballad. So it's, you know, it's a challenge to make a dance track out of a ballad. Mm -hmm. So yeah, had to go with it and everybody seems to love it. Well, so. Well, I look know, forward to hearing it later. It tonight, yeah. Now I've been listening to you for years. I must say I've been a fan for a very long time. I'm one of your older fans, so I go back a <laughs> way, long time ago. All right. Um, and what I've always admired most about you is that even though the sound styles have changed, music has evolved a little bit, You've always managed to be creative and experimental, but still keep that signature Corsten sound. Is that challenging for you, especially nowadays with the demographics of your fans changing a little bit? You got your loyal old school listeners, and then you got some new people that maybe just turned an ear to electronic music. Very true. Um, but you know what? The Corsten signature, I think, also comes out of the way I produce it in the studio. Right. So it's not necessarily something that I that I really think like, oh, I have to put this in because that makes it Corsten. It's just the way I do things, you know, right. that, that makes it that makes it sound like that. Um, and ever since, uh, whether it is from the days that I made the big trans records to the more electro sort of sounding tracks, um, my my first, the first thing I'm looking for when I'm in the studio, when I'm working on a new track is, is, is a big hook line or a melody. And that makes it still, you know, you can listen to one of the new Corsten Electro infus uh, inf influenced uh, tracks and you compare it to like uh, System F Out of the Blue, whatever, it's the big melody. Yeah, it's a big melody still, you know, that, that and, and I, I like to say, you know, to a lot of people who say like, oh yeah, not, you don't make trends anymore. Yeah. I still do make trance because what is trance? It's 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 all about it's just a rapper, you know. The, the end is a chocolate bar. That's I'm with you, doing. and it gets it's exhausting. I mean, being a part of your fan base, it's exhausting. A lot of the fans I feel almost segregate themselves, and they kind of put themselves in certain genres. But in reality, a good track is a good track, and yeah. it's electronic music. I mean, well, yeah, the, the message in any type of music is is the hook line or the melody or whatever. So you know, and whether you whether you rap the melody around, rap it with a a yellow paper or a red paper, that doesn't matter. You know, in the end, it's, it's the chocolate bar that you exactly, want to go for. Exactly, really. exactly. Started. I mean, was this something that you wanted to do? Did you wake up and say, I want to be a world-renowned DJ? Or is this just I've, I've, a hobby that turned into something yeah, bigger? Yeah, ever since I was a little kid, nine, year old, nine years old, you know, I was just crazy about music and, and um, preferably music that was not really on radio and, you know, like other right. stuff. Because I had a couple of neighbors 
they were kids that were older than me and they were playing all these records and they were already with turntables yeah, and yeah. as a nine-year-old kid you're like wow what's that you know so that that was really interesting for me and i always stayed with that and um you know developed a passion for djing as a hobby then i started going out and met, met a couple of guys who had a studio so from there grew the uh, the, the, the the whole uh, the passion hunger, hunger for, for right, making right. music and yeah the rest is history basically wow yeah now your fourth studio album weekend was released back in february i reviewed the album i loved okay. it great um i thought it was a project that demonstrated such a wide array of sound styles um and i know a lot of people probably ask you what was your favorite part of making that project but i'm going to ask you what was the most challenging part when you were producing the album and making was there anything that maybe was a little bit difficult for you well it's something that i've tried with the previous albums uh, LEF and, um, and and right of way maybe you know to come up with an album that is not strictly trans or strictly this or that you know because right. I, I before I had a breakthrough with trans I, I made everything from drum and bass to gabber to ambient to techno so I've always been very you know, diverse and uh, but I, I, I never felt that I got it quite right to make an album right. that sounds uh, uniform you know with different styles on it and I think I managed to do that quite you well with Weekend. And that was definitely the biggest did. challenge to actually get it right this time. What inspires you when you're actually creating a track? I mean, what, where do you get your ideas from? Is it other artists? Is it, you know, maybe a t completely different genre of music? I mean, what actually gives you your idea? Uh, very, very often it's, it's completely different styles of music. Uh, it could, could be jazz, could be classical music, you know, it's some, something completely different. Uh, every, everything basically without a 4 4 beat. Do you have a certain genre that you like the most? Maybe it's something you don't play all the time or something in particular you like them all. I, I it's like saying you have a it, it, children. You like them all in different ways. Yeah, I know, but you cannot, uh, right, one, you know? exactly, yeah. exactly. Um, my my favorite style of music to listen to is basically like like jazz and kind of chill out stuff. You know, oh. when I'm in a car, that's what I, that's what Very I play. Very cool. Very different. Uh, you want to get away from the you know, right, exactly, usual stuff. exactly. Um, but you know, so it's it's that it's different kind of music. It's. Um, it's when I travel, you know, people I meet, the, the food I eat, I don't know, it could be everyday, day to day Imagine things. You meet so many different types of people yeah, too. But so. Most inspiration comes out of having a new plugin or a new piece of equipment that just does something with the sound right. and I'm playing the keyboard and I'm going through the new sounds and all of a sudden I'm like, wow, this is cool and wow. And technology yeah, is always goes. changing, so you probably yes. always have a new toy to play with, yeah, so yeah, yeah. that's pretty so, cool. And, and it's, it's crucial to be sort of like really early with having new mm -hmm. stuff. Right. You know, because. Um, then yeah, then then you discover the the new right. big big little toy that, yeah. that that thing features, and you know there is your new sound. So. You know, over the last uh, two decades, I should say, um, you have made milestones. I mean, albums, compilations, you've done world tours. What do you feel is your best accomplishment in all of your career so far, up until now? Wow. Um, you know, it's, it's, I stumped it's, you. No, no, it's not, it's not really one accomplishment. It's, it's something that is it's more like a compliment. That right, I get. right. That, to, to, be able, to be able to get that compliment, uh, for me, is... is um, it gives me goosebumps sometimes, right. you know, because I just do, in my little studio back home, I do what I, what I like Love. doing, and, and sometimes it has, what I do in that studio has such an impact on some people's mm -hmm. lives. When someone comes up to me, like, uh, saying, I was in uh, Iraq, or I was in uh, Afghanistan, and your music pulled me through the whole thing, that is a big compliment. Wow. Or someone said, like, I was a big drug addict, you know, listening to your music, I'm clean now, and I like to, like to go out to it parties. Hit, it hits yeah. home, every, everyone, everywhere differently, so. Yeah, so, so I guess that is sort of the, the biggest accomplishment, that my music does that to people. Wow. That's it. That's really, that's really noble. I really, that's good to hear. Um, your full-on ferry tour debuts in the North in North America tonight yeah. at Roseland. Yeah. How does this differ from maybe some of your other live gigs that you do? Is it more of a production or? It's a produ it's, it comes with a custom-built production, yeah. custom-built visuals. Uh, but the, the whole thing, the fun thing is, uh, the, the full-on concept is more um, where you see, as, as a clubber, you see your DJs there on the lineup and 
and it's not your usual festival where, every, where everyone defends their own little right. part of the lineup, you know, like, oh, this is my time, yeah. you play, you go overtime, get lost, right? <laughs> you know, it's it's like, okay, I'm going to be playing back-to-back -back with Michael Woods tonight and with Gabriel Dresden, and if Michael feels that he needs to come up back on stage in the middle of my set and he wants to drop a tune, then it, yeah, yeah, so it's like this, this big, big sort of family thing yeah. that's going on on stage as well as in the crowd and all together basically. Awesome, well I look forward to it. Thank you so much for being with us Absolutely. today and you. I can't wait for your set later. For sure, thank Thanks. you. Thanks. All right.